Hello, I'm Debbie Bell Hosking for for Extra TV here at Cybos 2023 in Toronto, and I'm joined by Alistair Brown of EPAM. We're chatting about the waves of open banking as it evolves. An interesting topic. So, first of all, Alistair, welcome. It's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. And of course, the audience thinking the waves of open banking as it evolves. What are we talking about? So, let me throw a backdrop behind this whole thing initially because a lot of people are talking about this subject. Um, it can become repetitive, but it shouldn't because it's very exciting. But if I go back to the 1990s and uh, a series of musings written by Eric Bradbury called The Cathedral and the Bazaar, I think that's helpful because the central thesis of these musings is that on the one hand, you can have structured development held by a very small group of people. And on the other, you can have a more bizarre-like, random, much more innovative process that comes from mass collaboration. And a lot of that mass collaboration thinking actually comes from Hayek and the use of knowledge in society written in the late 1940s. So it's very good economic discipline, if you like. Why am I talking about this? Because central banking digital currencies have created this open banking concept, which has led to open finance and open data. And we'll talk about data in a minute. The principles in play here are quite interesting because the regulatory part of it is laggard. What, it, what it's doing is chasing the game as set out by the marketplace. So we've got the Payment Services Directive that hangs off SEPA, so it's a European concept. PSD2 revised that, PSD3 came out just this summer. There will be more PSDs of various sorts because they are chasing the game. So on the one hand, we're attempting to structure this whole thing, but on the other, we've got the marketplace racing ahead, interpreting it differently. PSD3 and 2 and 1, for that matter, European, fine. The non-Europeans have got hold of it and seen it as a different thing. It's not mandated. There's a clearer field of play, but this is where local meets global, and it's absolutely fascinating. The Australians have come out with a different regulation that is much more open-minded and much broader and leads to this data sharing idea. So the CDR, <coughs> the Consumer Data Right, um, and what it does is look at each sector and say we need a flow of data between financial services and the utilities and energy companies and so on and so on across the entire board. That's when it gets really interesting because we've got the opportunity to develop new business models, new new ways of doing things, some of which have not even been thought up yet. So this is quite exciting. So when we spoke informally ahead of our interview, you spoke to me and you said open banking is actually creating a bigger and better space. It is. What did you mean by that? Well, it, 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 effectively this, this interrelationship between categories that are usually separate from one another and that's that's a falsification, it's a, it's a, it's a pigeonholing that is not helpful at all. The more of these barriers we break down, the more lateral thinking we do, the more business models that look at that laterality, the better, in my humble opinion. We'll see a lot more in the next two or three years. Um, I think we're learning from one another across the globe in a, a really flexible way and here we are at a conference of thousands of people from all over the world. I shared a taxi with a bunch of Brazilians this morning, um, for instance, uh, and it, there's, there's a lot of information sharing going on. Where it leads, we do not know. But if I look at ISO 20022 as, as a method of enriching the data that we use in financial services, that's already the, the beginning of a trigger of, of other things. Yes, and that just sort of leads to more about data. Can you expand about data within open banking? I think if we go really down to, to the, the, the simple transaction between a corporation and an individual or individual to individual, we've still got a lack of really useful information. It's still really basic um, and that leads to confusion. Um, it, it leads to more questions rather than just providing an answer. If we enrich the data, we know not only between which parties there has been a transaction and we've authenticated those individuals and authentication is a big deal these days, um, then we're already onto something. But if, if we understand the behaviour that is behind a series of transactions, then the people looking at that stuff can use it more intelligently. So it's, it's improved market research, it's enabling a marketing budget to be spent more accurately because instead of a, 
a broad brush marketing campaign, they can hit specific sectors of society, specific types of consumer much more accurately and address their real needs, which in turn leads to embedded finance and this, this whole game of enabling payment methods as a, as, a, as a way of deriving more data to these, these organisations. So we've spoken about the data word. Yes. Briefly, what about the regulation word? Well, it's, that's the cathedral. I'm more of a bizarre person myself. The cathedral enables the bizarre, I think, if, you, if, if I go back to my original thought. Um, there will be more of it. There has to be. Um, it would be a good thing if we could make it a more regionally uh, capable set of uh, frameworks um, rather than at the moment we've got a lot of thinking going on in a lot of different places but it's not unified. The other key word here is interoperability because at the moment we're heading for digital money in each individual country. What happens when we try to do something that crosses the border because there's much more of that than ever before. Interoperability therefore becomes necessary. The framework around that needs to exist. It kind of works for Europe in a way in a way, but uh, with some weaknesses as well. So talking about things working, yes. let's briefly chat about opportunities that it may bring. Um, endless stuff that we've always thought about that could happen, that doesn't happen, that will now possibly happen. Um, I, I said earlier that the enablement of new business models because of the, the, the flow of better quality data between more and more parties. It's got to happen. There's, there's an expectation in the younger generation that because it's on your phone, it's always available and it's always accurate. Well, I, alas, no, there's a lot of work to do before we get to that stage. But I, I think the, the higher the quality of the data, the, the better the information, the better decision making, the better the evolution of these business models will be. Great. And something interesting to look forward to and watch. Absolutely. Wonderful. Alistair, thank you for joining us. It's a pleasure. Thank you.